Mark Farber is here with us, as is uh, Bob Parker, our dual guest hosts this morning. Uh, Bob from Chicago writes in, I live in the U.S. Please can you ask for suggestions of assets or instruments that I can buy or own to hide my wealth from the economic downturn reasonably safely and still get some return as adjusted for real inflation? And he describes himself as being afraid of the massive debt being run up by our government and the central bank mark. Well, I think that in Asia we have lots of assets that are reasonably priced. I mean, in October, November of last year, actually most Asian markets made a major low, and it was a low, Korea, Taiwan, Japan, of 20 to 30 years. And I can assure you in the last 20 to 30 years, Asia has progressed enormously and it will continue to progress. So I think that in Asia, we have lots of sectors that are quite attractive. A, the banks, they don't have the toxic assets which we have in the Western world. And they deleveraged after the Asian crisis, 97, 98. So say Thai banks or Singapore banks, Hong Kong banks look quite interesting. Then we have the REIT sector. And by the way, globally, I think that REITs are in a recovery mode at the present time yeah. and in Singapore and Hong Kong we have lots of REITs they yield around 10 12 percent they will maybe cut the dividends uh, for a while but compared to say US government bonds they're very attractive or you take uh, an REIT that invests in Indian properties it's got hammered I think it's quite a good investment opportunity at the yeah. present time also like the Turkish fund we talked before about Turkey and the Russian fund uh, looks quite attractive to me. Mm. Uh, Bob, specific ideas? Well, uh, three specific ideas are a, a diversified portfolio of Asian equities. And that's despite the rallies that we've seen so far this year, because let's not forget markets like uh, China and Taiwan are already up 40% year to date. Uh, and we may see in the next month some give back in some of those gains. But I think structurally, a diversified portfolio of Asian equities. Secondly, a diversified portfolio of what I call good Latin America. Good Latin America is Brazil, Chile, Peru and Colombia. Um, and that's partly a play on the growth in Latin America. It's also highly correlated with commodity prices. And if you are positive on commodity prices, I think the way to play that is Latin American equities. And then a core defensive position is in defensive equity sectors which are under leveraged in the developed markets. And you know, Mark mentioned earlier on you know, Johnson & Johnson. That's a classic company that does reasonably well in a period of mediocre growth. So companies which aren't leveraged where you're confident the dividend is being maintained and you know, basic household goods companies or healthcare companies for the pharmaceutical sector um, I think that's the only you have, you've got to play it by sector in developed markets and avoid those sectors which are still going through painful deleveraging and that process of painful deleveraging is going to continue for some time to come. Uh, and Mark talked a lot about REITs and um, uh, investment structures that contain property and have the mm. prospect if we well, get well, a well, REIT Evaluation. Well, my, my comment on, on, on REITs is I think you've got to be very specific geographically. And, you know, for example, my office in London is in Canary Wharf. Yeah. Uh, the headcount in Canary Wharf year on year is down very dramatically. Um, and in many areas, particularly the city of London and Canary Wharf in the UK, um, you know, tenancy rates are down. There is downward pressure on rents. So I think you've got to look at REITs where you don't have that downward pressure on occupancy and, and rents. Mm. Yes, but I'd like to mention my whole investment style going forward is on the premise that we will have inflation in the next 10 years and probably inflation rates that are much higher than anybody expects. And so you want to buy assets and you want to buy cheap assets now. For instance, I was just in Vancouver. In Vancouver, you get to know a, a lot of people in the mining industry. There are lots of mining companies that are now unbelievably inexpensive that could easily go up five times in the next few years simply because there has been a shakeout. A, they don't get financing at the present time, and B, there's not much new supplies coming on. So frequently for the major mining companies, the new ones, the BHPs, the Rio Tintos, it's cheaper to buy an existing company than to build and go and do the exploration yourself. So I think there are lots of opportunities all around the world. 
and you have to be selective. I think it's going to be a stock picker's market. But returning to the Asian theme, the Asian markets bottomed out in October, November. And they didn't make a new low in March when the S&P dropped to 666 intraday on March 6th. And so technically they look actually quite attractive. And what Bob said is absolutely correct. There'll be a correction sometimes, but you know, most people missed this rally entirely because they focused on the economy and didn't pay attention to the technicals of the market. And so people sit there and said, oh, fundamentally it's bad. The market is going up for no reason, but money printing is a reason.